welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Recently we made this really cute cross body purse with a mushroom or sort of a fantastical whimsical theme to it and today we are just going to quickly recap the toadstool mushroom applique that we made for the purse. We used 24-7 cotton for our purse, so that's what I'm using for my applique. But whatever the project is that you're making this applique for, be it an acrylic blanket or a cotton sweater or maybe a wool cap, use the same yarn for your applique that you used for the rest of your project. That way, when you wash it, it'll all work nicely together. For your mushroom, you need around 10 yards of red and around 5 yards of white, so very little yarn. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a 5 millimeter hook. This is also known as an H or an 8. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. So this is how I'm going to make my toadstool. I'm going to begin with white. This is the stem part. I'm going to begin with a slip knot. I'm going to chain 9. And I'm going to build a stem. So I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook. I'm going to single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into each of the next two chains. So that's three single crochet all together so far. Half double crochet into the next three chains. I have two chains left. I'm going to double crochet into the next chain. And into that last chain, I'm going to double crochet seven times. Now, if your bottom chain pulls out on you, which is very typical. Just leave that little short tail out. We're going to weave it through these stitches later and just cinch it up. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And we're working up the underside of our foundation chain just like we did with the bottom of our purse. We're going to half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then into the last three, we're going to single crochet. And there we go. Leave yourself a nice long tail for sewing your applique piece to your purse. So no matter what applique you might be making, leave a long tail. And we're going to just cinch this little space shut by taking our little yarn tail and weaving it through those bottom seven double crochet stitches. We'll get it through the first few. And then through the last couple there. And then you're just going to sort of cinch it shut. Hold the stitches, pull tightly on that little tail, and it will just cinch that little space closed for you. Then you can weave it up through the rest of the stitches along that row, or turn around and weave it back through the same stitches you just pulled it through, and that should keep it from coming apart. There we go. And that is the little stem for my mushroom. Let's do a mushroom cap now. We're going to take our red yarn now, start with a slip knot. We're going to chain 13. So that's 13 chains. And here we go. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet into the next chain, and single crochet into the chain after that. We're going to half double crochet into each of the next two chains, double crochet into each of the next four chains,
half double crochet into each of the next two chains. And single crochet into each of the last two chains. So you've got 12 stitches all the way across. Something that looks like that. We're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to repeat that. Single crochet into each of the first two stitches. Half double crochet into the next two stitches. Double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So each of these stitches aligns with the stitch just like it from the previous row. Half double crochet into the next two stitches. And single crochet into the last two stitches. And that last stitch might be kind of small or squished or kind of curling down the edge. Don't miss it. You still have 12 stitches and you've got a bit of a bow shape happening, a bit of a bump in the middle. Chain one turn. We're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to change things. We're going to work two double crochet, two double crochet into each of those four stitches. So we're doubling up the double crochets from the row before. So you'll have eight double crochet in the middle here. And then we return to the familiar pattern, a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, and a single crochet in each of the last two stitches. All right, now we have something that looks like this. We're not done yet, we have one more row to go. We are not chaining one, and we're not turning. So right from where you are, we're gonna start working down this little side across the bottom, up the other side and all the way around the top again. Just single crochet. We're going to single crochet around the edge of each of those three rows. So you just get your hook in there anywhere you can. Don't worry too much about it. Single crochet in each foundation chain all the way across. The actual stitch count for this little edging row doesn't matter, all you're doing is just smoothing out the edge and making a kind of a constant single crochet stitch all the way around. So we're single crocheting in each foundation chain. I'm just working over top of that little short tail. Then we're not chaining or anything, we're just turning and we're working up the side of the mushroom. And now we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way along the top of the mushroom cap. And this is just going to smooth everything out. Give it a little bit of a kind of a cartoony look. And remember when you're making appliques, as you sew them down, you're going to sort of sew and reposition, sew and reposition. So if your shape isn't exactly perfect when it's finished being crocheted, you can kind of bend and stretch and tack it into place as you single crochet. So remember that when you're making an applique. Once you get all the way back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch and fasten off leaving a nice long tail for sewing. There we go. And that's the cap. Now it's almost complete. We need to add some of those pretty little white spots that we find on toadstools in magical forests. You can do a few things. You can add little white buttons. You can add little round pieces of white felt by gluing them on. You can crochet little tiny circles or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna add some French knots. So I'm going to grab a length of white yarn and my needle and get started on that.
We're going to take our yarn needle and a length of yarn. This is for French knots. I have the right side of my mushroom facing up. This is the wrong side of my mushroom. I am bringing my yarn in from the wrong side or the back of my mushroom cap anywhere I want, doesn't matter. I'm going to leave a little bit of white yarn out the back for knotting later. So a little, little tail, I'll just keep my finger on it for now. And now I'm going to make a French knot. Now we've done these a few times on the show, but here we go. It helps to work against a flat surface. You are going to Put your finger down nice and tightly on your mushroom cap, making sure that you catch that yarn underneath it so it doesn't want to go anywhere. Wrap your white yarn around your hook eh, three, four, five times. Then you're going to poke it through a part of your mushroom cap, just a, like a loop away from where your yarn came out. You can tug that back down to tighten it up. And then making sure you don't catch your little yarn. Slowly pull that all the way through and you've created a cute little French knot. It's like a little bubble. And depending on how many wraps around your uh, yarn needle you do will determine how long or how wide this gets. So you want to just keep that tight. The first one's always a bit tricky because you want to try and manage the tightness of both ends, but once you get one in it becomes easier to do. Then you just want to kind of randomly bring your needle out in various spots around your mushroom cap. Don't pull too tightly on the bottom because you don't want to pinch your cap. And then you can do it again. I like to wrap maybe three, four, five times around my needle. And I try to hold that as tightly as I can. And just sort of pop over top of one loop and then slowly pull that yarn all the way through. There we go. These make cute little bubbly knots. You can work away at that for a while until you have as many little dots on your mushroom cap as you like. When you're done with your last little speck, you just want to bring your yarn through to the back and find your two ends and knot them together. Not too tight because you don't want to pinch the front of your mushroom cap, but tight enough that they won't come undone. And then you can just trim any ends and it doesn't look, matter how messy it is maybe three or four times just to be sure. It doesn't matter how messy it is on the back because that's not going to show. So I'm just going to trim those two ends now. There we go. And that's the front of my mushroom cap. And now all I want to do is sew down the stem and then sew the mushroom cap down over top of it. So I'm going to position my stem where I want, thread up that long tail, and I'm going to use the top facing loops of my purse so I don't have to sew through into the inside and I also am aware of not sewing through the actual the whole purse by accident so I'm just going to see pick up a loop of the actual purse and then go through the stitch on the stem again not pulling too tight I'm going to stop every once in a while and reposition. Now remember, if you want like a little kind of a jaunty little twist to your stem, or if you want it straight, or if you want it to kind of bend some one way or the other, you can kind of keep repositioning it as you sew it down. Once you've finished sewing all the way around your stem or whatever piece of applique you're working on, you're just going to make sure to knot it once, twice, whatever you think it needs, just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Now the top of my stem is going to be hidden under my mushroom cap, so it doesn't have to be super neat and tidy, but I want that knot to be nice and tight. And then I'm going to just weave my tail in a little bit underneath some of those other stitches on the stem. This will just help to make sure that my 
uh, yarn tail doesn't want to come undone. But I don't have to weave in the whole thing because I have quite a bit left over. So I know it's not going to want to come out of that. So I'm just going to give it a trim. Careful not to snip my stitches. And now I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the mushroom cap. I'm going to put it in place where I want it, whether I want it kind of on the side or straight or however I want it. And then I'm going to pin it in place if I need to or hold it like I tend to and do the same thing. Pick up the individual loops of the stitches from the purse and then work my way through all of the stitches all the way around my mushroom. When I've finished, I'm going to knot it, weave in the tail, and then that'll be it for my applique. And once you've sewn it on, you're all done. Remember, whatever the project may be that you're adding your applique to, be sure to use the same fiber and try to use the same yarn weight category for your applique so that when you're stitching it on to your finished project, it's just easier. It also makes it easier to wash because if it's all the same fiber, it'll wash nicely together, however it is you choose to wash it. We hope you enjoyed making this little toadstool applique along with us, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.